Hi everyone, it's Agnes and I'm reading to you another story today from Neville Goddard's book, The Law and the Promise. So it goes like this. A year ago, I took my children to Europe, leaving my furnished apartment in the care of my maid. When we returned a few months later to the US, I found my maid and all my furniture gone. The apartment superintendent stated that the maid had had my furniture moved by my request. There was nothing I could do at the moment, so I took my children and moved into a hotel. Of course, I reported the incident to the police and also brought in private detectives on the case. Both organizations investigated every moving company, every storage warehouse in New York City, but to no avail. There seemed to be absolutely no trace of my furniture, nor of my maid. Having exhausted all outside sources, I remembered your teaching and decided I would try using my imagination in this matter. So while seated in my hotel room, I closed my eyes and imagined myself in my own apartment, sitting in my favorite chair and surrounded by all of my personal furnishings. I looked across the living room at the piano on which I kept pictures of my children. I would continue to stare at my piano until the entire room became vividly real to me. I could see my children's pictures and actually feel the upholstery of the chair in which in my imagination I sat. Now, I want to say something here. Activating the senses. So she activated feeling the upholstery and seeing the pictures of the children. Okay. So she does this in her imaginal scene. So as many senses are that are relevant to your scene, it is good to activate them. Okay. The next day as I came out of my bank, I turned and walked in the direction of my vacant apartment instead of towards my hotel. When I reached the corner, I discovered my mistake and I was just about to turn back when I noticed I was drawn to a very familiar pair of ankles. Yes, the ankles belong to my maid. I walked up to her and I took her arm. She was quite frightened, but I assured her all I wanted from her was my furniture. I called a taxi and she took me to the place in which her friends had stored my furnishings. In one entire day, my imaginal scene had found what an entire big city police force and private investigators could not find in weeks. Now, this lady knew of the secret of imagining before she called the police, but imagining, in spite of its importance, was forgotten owing the attention being fixed on facts. However, what reason failed to find by force, imagining found without effort. Nothing merely goes on, including the sense of loss. Now I'm going to say that again. Nothing merely goes on, including the sense of loss. Now, why am I saying that? Because many of you email me and in coaching are active in your sense of loss. They don't call me. They used to do this and they're not doing that anymore they're pulling away. They don't want to go out with me like they used to. Okay, you are committing yourself and going forth with your sense of loss. So this is the little nugget in here that I want you to listen to and see if you can apply to your situation. So let me go back. Nothing merely goes on, including the sense of loss without its imaginal support. So you are imaginally supporting the sense of loss by focusing on these things. By imagining that she was seated in her own chair, in her own living room, surrounded by all of her furnishings, she withdrew the imaginal support she had given to her sense of loss. So while she's spending time in imagination, focusing on how it should be and how it was when she left the furniture in the apartment, and enjoying and being in that scene, she in that moment is withdrawing her sense of loss and her imaginal support that she was giving to it. Okay, so she withdrew her imaginal support she had given to her sense of loss, and by this imaginal change, she recovered her lost furniture and re established her home. Your imagination is most creative when you imagine things as you desire them to be. Okay, so a great story. And it's in the chapter for those of you that have this book. Visionary Fancy chapter six. Okay, so 
I'm going to put down below also a playlist of other Neville stories that I've read in the past for those of you that want to do a little bit more listening about Neville because Neville's teachings are about living in the wish fulfilled, using your imagination to focus on solutions and to focus your way out of whatever you are facing today. So if you are facing something today that is unpleasant and that is not to your liking, do not be mentally lazy. Get yourself out of problem mode or out of the emotional state you're in and focus on the solution and play it over and over and activate whichever of the senses are relevant to what you want. Okay, so lots of love and I will see you in the next YouTube.